Not only do they not use prepositional phrases to certify the order of operations, but the deductive reasoning of all their sentences is presumed and an illusionary and say nothing. Interesting. So anybody that's a multimillionaire that's being sued by a fiction can hire me to come in and say, that's a lie, and I can go up and take that document that is suing them, put it up on a blackboard, correct it, and prove that it is 100% fraud and says absolutely nothing. <laughs> I guess you're pretty busy, aren't you? I am. Yeah, I know. I, I've also uh, contracted my services to the United States Pentagon as a muster master to protect all of our offshore agencies from any foreign jurisdictional contracts to damage them. I, I have also made this same contract with 82 other countries in the banking industry. Yeah, I know. I don't know how much, you know, I've, we've talked about that off air, and I, you, maybe you could go into that. I know you've done some amazing contracts for different governments. Especially well, the these, China, these, these contracts are roughly 100, about 115 pages long, and they, they go through a broad base of, of subjects teaching the information. A lot of it's on the website in a different format, in a different format but it's still uh, articulated to protect them. Yeah. So if anybody gets into a situation where they their legal department can't come to a conclusion, can't arbitrate themselves out of it, they can hire me to come in and certify that the attacker, the moving party, has committed a fraud on his ability to communicate. Yeah. So that therefore on on the on the side of the government when it comes to something that they want from another government, offshore or foreign they really rely on your technology and your, your literacy. Well, they can they can rely on it when it comes to paperwork. Yeah. But if no one's going to listen, just like uh, Bush says to Hussein, uh, surrender, and he says, yeah, blow it out your ear. You yeah. know, what do we do? Yeah. We, dro we, we drop a little ordinance over there and we arrest the guy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's going to say, we're going to have our way whether you like it or not. Yeah, that seems and the old like rule is still there. Right you can keep what you can hold. Yeah, but here back at home, I think that is with the Patriot Act in place and the habeas corpus loss. I think that it's the unless they somebody really knows your stuff and doesn't get a hold of you or one of your staff, and then if the government goes after you. You've got a, a big, big, big uphill battle of fiction now. That's my feeling, anyway. I'm you know, I you know I wrote a I wrote a paper and I submitted it to the Supreme Court of the United States on habeas corpus, and after that it was abolished. Yeah, yeah. And that's when when Rehnquist was alive. Yeah. And the document said, if your habeas corpus is written in adverb verb, how can you bring forth a verb vessel? Yeah. And how does the verb vessel ask for anything in the first place? So what was the what was the response? Well, it doesn't exist, so therefore we can abolish it. And, you know, even around 1996, we used the apostille. Now, that's a document where, a ambassador, where the senator of the state would have to give you authorization to bring a lawsuit into a foreign port. Now, Which foreign port didn't right? mean if it was domestic or overseas. Right. And we wrote the lawsuit with the Mark Martins case, and we filed it in Badaloskov, Russia. Wow. And we won the case for, for $50 million in Badaloskov, Russia, which stopped all mail from leaving the United States for 10 days to check the mail for any apostilles. When the, when the World Court at The Hague learned about how the apostille was used and that the word APP meant no contract, the word apostille and its use was abolished by all 200 countries of the United Nations. That's amazing. That's amazing. You see, they, they had that for a long time, since 1905, and then when they had, and everyone pretended in an illusionary condition of thinking because they couldn't prove the mathematical interface on language, because everyone, every time someone came forward and said, that's illegal. The judge says, fine, prove it. And he says, well, I can't. It's just I know it's illegal. And he says, well, when you can prove it, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll act on it. Well, I proved it. And when I proved it, that's when they could go ahead and start changing things.
And the government has been changing many things. A lot of the courts now won't allow paper filings, only electronic filings. So if they don't like what's filed, they can hit the delete button. And you can't you can't put a poster poster stamp on an electronic filing. You can't do an endorsement on an electronic filing. You don't have an autograph on an electronic filing. So theoretically, they're not. They're just a higher degree of fiction, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And when you call these people on their fiction, well, was the one thing? The first thing they're going to do is they're going to run for cover. Yeah. Yeah, with somebody like you calling on them, but some guy on the street probably would call 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 them on it, and then they'd run for cover from the recut for because they didn't know what they were doing, you know. Well, you've got to ask yourself a question: Are you knowledgeable? Exactly. If, if you're going to be an individual who's going to yell wolf, there better be a wolf there. Exactly. Which means if you're going to if you're going to say you did it wrong, you better know. One, how to prove how it was done wrong under Title 42, 1986. Right. To stop it, and then you must be able to correct it. Exactly. And that's what you do, and they need to get yes. a hold of you to do that, right? I and, mean, you know, when I go to court, the judges know what I do. They've researched what I do. I walk in the court, judge says, I know why you're here. <laughs> you're not going to do a seminar. Yeah. I know you can prove we don't exist, that's but amazing. there's a... There's a damage here, and none of us are educated enough to know how to correct the damage. Like we've got a bank robber, a murderer, a, a rapist. And the court comes back and says to me, while I'm on the witness stand, the U.S. attorney says, well, Mr. Miller, are we supposed to let that murder go free because we didn't have our words in the right place? I says, well, you're the man with 10 years of college, 10 years of experience in the prosecution department. Why didn't you co write the charges with the correct sentence structure in the first place? Why did the people who ran for office in the legislature, the Congress, and the Senate not cr uh, rather create the laws with the correct sentence structure so that the courts were accountable, not as courts, but as open markets, because you have an open market contract, to articulate the accuracy by which the laws are written, and therefore you can't hire me to, to use the loophole to get you out of trouble. And I went to the IRS and I said the same thing. If you write the tax code with the correct sentence structure, you'll have 100% taxpayers, not 30%. And if 100% pay taxes, we'll have an 8% tax rate, not a 45% tax rate, and everybody gets to make money. Exactly. Across the board. This country will grow exponentially faster than anybody in the world with its technology. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, you know, that we look at flaws in technology, we look at flaws in drugs, we look at flaws in medicine. Nobody wants to look at flaws in language. And oh, the language that's because is, it vacates 100% of everything. Yeah, they, that's my point. <laughs> it's my point, you know. I'm, I'm getting to be your student here slowly but surely, but I'm starting to understand you, you know. I'm just scanning your website, and everybody that's out there with, should go immediately on his website because you'll stay there for hours and hours and hours, you know. You know, if people people will get my tapes, and and they'll sit down to watch them, and they don't turn them off. I mean, they sit there and watch 20 hours without turning off the TV set, and they're going, I can't, re can't, can't believe that I've just watched this guy talk for 20 hours. Yeah, no, I, I can, you know, an hour goes by on this show with you very fast, you know, very quickly. And it's just totally amazing to, um, yeah, I'm just seeing, you know, I'm just looking on here. You update everything, and it's amazing. You, okay. Yeah, and it's been have, just recently uh, updated. My new books just came out last week. What's the name of your new book? Well, it's the David Lynn Miller Communications, and it's uh, it's been critiqued, and uh, I've got some new documents in there that are very state-of-the-art. Yeah. Uh, we go through the uh, deductive reasoning of what foreign courts are and just like what I just said on this radio show. Yeah, yeah. And I see you've got a... Now, what's this follow-up number, this 414-466-3584? That's, that's my home phone. Okay. So you I'm, uh, I'm very public. You know, my name and address has been up there uh, on, on the Internet.